Just make a perception check. Oh, shit. Oh, God, it's not the assassin again. Please don't be the assassin. You have a sense that something is off, and you kind of come in middle of the night. Maybe you have no idea what hour it is, but you, everyone else is dead asleep. <laughs> yes, Caleb. We were going to stop. I was about to say who's taking first watch. Caleb's already said that like we're no. never going to sleep. Without somebody awake I took ever first again, watch. you can take first watch. Yeah. Okay. The okay. dome is up no. in the room. Hmm? Are we? Dome, up dome is worthless oh, for, coming for yeah, this woman. Yeah. Just wired. So on your watch, you start like kind of nod off a little bit, just a little bit, and you kind of catch yourself. You get this weird sense, and you kind of glance over and at the curtains that are drawn at the balcony, um, where the steps kind of lead up. You see a figure kind of just looking in. And as soon as you straighten up, the figure oh. kind of ducks around. Could the side. I see what what the figure looked like? Uh, from what you can see, it's back in a backlit, because uh, there's no light on the, really on the inside of the room you're in or much. Most of the light's going to be inside, so you just like the outline of just a, just the light, a light, bit of a figure kind of peeking in, and they vanish around the corner. I hit everyone. No! Oh, there's somebody there. Go you out the door. Yeah. You pick up the door, you look out the edge, and you can see walking towards the bar. The room itself is fairly empty except for the ogre uh, bodyguard, but you see kind of briskly walking to the bar, the gentleman. Oh, he was the one? You gather that he's probably the one who was looking in. Never mind. What, what is it? Nothing go to sleep. No, no, oh, and I go, I go chase him down. Okay. As you start descending the steps, as he kind of looks up at you, and you see that there's he puts a second glass of wine, or a second glass up onto the counter, and begins to pour it. I'll sit down. Slides the glass over to you, takes his, not even kind of looking at you, he's just kind of looking ahead, sitting next to you, takes a sip. How is she? Marion. So you do know her. Once. Did you love her? Yeah. Lights over and kind of gives another shoe motion to the ogre, who kind of like leaves the room and heads into one of the back open archway and closes the door, so it's just the two of you in the chamber, definitively. Why did you leave? Why didn't you, I mean, why didn't you come back? Did you know that I was? I didn't know about you until you showed up. And I, I couldn't come back. Why? I was a merchant sailor, out of feeling. I was working with the Solvia family to ship along the coast. I was young, I was impetuous, I was trying to make coin and, you know, make a difference to whatever that meant, but I wasn't wealthy by any means. But when I met Mary and I spent every copper I earned to see her, I had to see her. And it wasn't until she told me about her feelings that I found myself lacking to meet the standards of such a vibrant creature as her. I was nothing, I had nothing. So I, I, I told myself I, I would find a fortune and come back. And I could prove over all these other people that I 
was worthy. But our ship was attacked, and I was taken prisoner and dragged to Dark Toe. I've been there. Yeah, right. I managed to earn my freedom while I was there, using the <laughs> skills I didn't know I had, the skills that I still to this day employ, a knack for speech and business. I earned quite a fortune while I was on that island. But the things I had to do changed who I am. I was a criminal. My name was merely a bounty now to most people along the coast, especially in Cadranas. I cared too much for Marion to drag her into this underworld that I couldn't escape from. So I never returned. I knew she'd be all right without me. She's much stronger than I am. But in my, in my attempts to be worthy, I fell deeper than I ever was. And it wasn't safe for her, for me to come back. With my growing influence, I began to draw the ire of the Pank, the Plank King, and I knew it was time to leave. So, slinking north, I found this bed of thieves and kind of built this lawless empire. Now, it's not really something to be proud of, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She loves you. You should have trusted her. I don't know. I don't know how you guys could make it work or anything, but um, I always thought growing up, I wish I could have known her before you, you know? Because afterwards, she's never loved anyone since. Told me stories about you. She said you were the most charming person in the entire world. <laughs> I'm not that person anymore. I don't know. I think your charm got you pretty far. <laughs> Why didn't you just say yes? I sent you so many messages. I sent you so many messages. Just, you could have just said yes. I'm your dad. Oh man, trust her. I didn't know about you, but man, I really want to hang out and get to know you. Just her, I'm not your father. Any man can have a child. Only someone who's around to raise them well can call themselves a father. Whatever it counts, I see a lot of her in you. It's the horns. Well, that certainly helps, mm -hmm. but you're you're bright. You're clever. You're funny. And you, you can do a lot of good. And I'm glad that 
You haven't fallen into the same traps I have, and I kind of want to protect you from the darker parts of the worlds where we've crossed. You want to protect me? Yeah. I'm going to call you dad. So, love that. He takes a big drink of his wine, <laughs> puts it back down, kind of rubs his forehead, shakes off his hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, basically, like, you can't smuggle people ever again, basically. <laughs> Okay with that. What should I tell Mama? What should I tell her? I don't know if you should. And growing up, you know, it's just me and her. We told each other everything. I feel like I don't know. These last few months I've just been keeping so much. You're making a difference in this world. You're making friends in places where no one is able to. Marion is, there's no other like her out there. And I know that in this line of work, it's only a matter of time until Either I have to disappear entirely, I get a knife in the gut, or I get thrown into a dungeon somewhere for the rest of my days. And what I consider the best bit of parenting, if you want to call it that, or show of my appreciation for the time that I had with her, is to not drag you both down with me. understand that, right? Yeah. You understand that that kills me, right? It's really easy to forget everything and be lost in the stupor of alcohol and drugs and women and men and just be caught up in your own little game of kingpin. Mm -hmm. But when you walked in, All that's changed now. Wow. Hey, I've got an idea. What if you decide to give all this up and Mama decides to leave the Lava Chateau? You know, she's been thinking about stopping for a while now. She just doesn't know what to do with herself. I think you should go back to Nicodramas secretly and sweep her off her feet. And the two of you could ride off into the sunset, take a ship somewhere, and just live happily ever after. It's a nice dream, isn't it? It's a nice dream. And finishes his drink. Gets off of his stool. Puts his hand on yours. Good night, Jester. Hey, Dad. Next time I'm in town, Play some Uno. Marquisian, interesting. <laughs> okay. okay. And he turns around and takes a few steps and stops. 
takes a deep breath and then keeps walking to his bedchamber. I stay there for like an hour, just not really sipping my drink, just staring. <laughs> Just completely <laughs> slaughtered. Just <laughs> rolled some hit dice and fucked us up. Oh, we did the conversation in like oh, an hour. <laughs>